views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. Hi everyone, welcome to Mike's Corner. I'm Michael Lomron and I'm thrilled today to be talking with my good friend, Anthony Lee. He's an actor, a rapper, as well as a record producer. How are you doing today, Anthony? Yeah, I'm doing good, man. Can't complain at all. Mm, yeah, it's good to hear, it's good to hear, man. I'm glad to have you on. How have you, how have you and your family been doing since, since the start of the pandemic? Uh, maintaining, you know, trying to uh, stay above ground and keep my health up to date, you know what I mean? up to par and my family's pretty good you know i can i'm thanking god they're they're safe you know what i mean it's good to hear same here man. talk to me a little bit about uh what was going up like growing up for you in new york city like what was that like it, it was a hell of an experience you know i grew up in harlem playing basketball you know listening to rap running around with my friends you know getting in a few uh a little trouble here and there <laughs> yeah. but it, it, it's been very exciting for me you know I love my city. And what was it? Yeah, when was the day you first fell in love with hip hop? Well, since a young end, I've been listening to hip hop. Since, uh, before I was born, you know, I was I basically was born into hip hop. But uh, during middle school, I had a project where we had to record like a rap for like racism. So since about eighth grade, seventh and eighth grade, I, I I wanted to do it myself. You know, and uh, artists like Lil Wayne inspired me in middle school. So I said, you know, I listen to him all the time. I might as well try to make my own rap. <laughs> I actually, Dr. Mainstream sure changing. Let's take a quick look. What was your, your eating habits back, like back then? <laughs> Chopped cheese. That was my favorite. You know, it's like growing up in Harlem. That's all the corner stores was chopped cheese, chips. Soda. Every time I got a chopped cheese, I got a Welch's grape soda. And with the styrofoam cup, the white, because Wayne was my favorite rapper. That's middle school. So I've been eating like that. Chips every day. I love chips. Um, salt and vinegar, ruffles with cheddar, barbecue chips. I love that. And that's full of sodium right there. Cold cut sandwiches. I love them joints, man. That, that's what I used to eat growing up. What makes you want to come forward with that and let the let the world know about your situation? Well, having high blood pressure for me has been a crazy up and down roller coaster, and it's something I struggle with since the age of fourteen, mm -hmm. and it's been bothering me every day. Every time I go to the hospital or the doctor, my blood pressure is up. And around two years ago, I really got my health way better than it was as a teenager. You know, growing up heavy set. And I felt like it was hard for me. I should come out and show people my progression so it can inspire people going through the same thing to want to get their health right. Because we ain't, we're, we're nothing without our health. We can't do anything, sure. you know? Yeah, yeah. That's cool, man. That's very bold of you. Thanks, man. What made you first fall in love with acting? What was, what was that, that spark that made you want to go to acting? Well, it was a, it was something that I picked up in college. Um, and it was during a time where I was, I was going through a real like tough time, like, especially with my health as well. So I noticed when I acted, it, it kind of helped me forget about my troubles. Like I almost be somebody else. So, and then I love, I love the feelings I was able to express that I wouldn't express in my everyday living through my acting and like, 
the teachers really inspired me in, 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 in my college, you know, just sure. in general in life. Basically, the roles that you played now since you started acting. I remember in my acting class in college, I had this role where I was like this guy getting his heart broke mm -hmm. um, by a girl. And it was like, it was hard for me to let her go. And during that time, it was like the total opposite of who I was, yeah. <laughs> you know? And uh, I had never been heartbroken or anything, but I had to dig into, you know, really capture those emotions. Big departure for you. <laughs> All right, coming to a close, I got a few lightning round questions for you. If you could have dinner with any celebrity, dead or alive, who would it be and why? Okay. Bernie Mac, you know, he obviously he's dead, but Bernie Mac is my favorite actor, comedian. He was so unapologetic with his art. His, oh, he never compromised. And he, to me, he's just one of the funniest guys that ever walked this face of the, the face of the earth, man. Which kind of do the only three movies with you? What would those movies be? I piggybacking off Bernie Mac. One of my favorite movies is called Soul Men. That's one of them. That's a a movie called A Thin Line Between Love and Hate, starring Martin Lawrence, another one of my favorite actors. There's another funny movie called Step Brothers with Will Ferrell. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just all a, classic, you know, all classics. What's next with Spiffy Lee after this? More music, definitely more short films, short film roles. You know, I'm working on that with my one of my friends right now. Mm -hmm. I'm working on a short film. It's like a love flick. So you're going to see Spiffy in love. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> but uh I'm gonna continue on, on just inspiring people too, you know, with health. That that's a, a big thing for me right now. Could um inspiring people to get healthy. So yeah, inspiring. health, good. music, God, family, and acting, you know what I mean? Yeah, good luck with that, man. That's the dope. Thanks, man. Appreciate you. Take care, man. everyone welcome to higher tv my name is elliot adams and today we're going to talk about what happens when music the most universally loved thing to ever exist clashes into something absolutely horrific the past year and a half of our lives yes today we will be discussing music during the covid lockdown and the effects it had on the musician's creative process who better to join me in tackling this subject than two guys who spend most of their COVID free time rocking away the quarantine blues. Their names are Will Connor and Matt Connolly. And if you put that together, you get Wilma, the biggest and most impressive band in the world. Will, Matt, thanks for joining me today. Thank you for having us. Oh, it. So it's a pleasure. Of course, of course, always. First, tell the Bronx about Wilma. How did you meet and what made you realize that you wanted to pursue music full time? Uh, we met uh, pretty young, actually. We were on a baseball team together, and, and then we started taking music lessons together in the same elementary school. And then that teacher put us in a band together when we were in high school, and then we kind of just formed off and did our own thing um, once we got to college. Yeah, we realized once we were, once I was around 18, that we were pretty good at it and it meant a lot to us. So we really wanted to do it full time and hopefully post college do it as our, our profession. Awesome. So are you sure music wasn't just like a backup plan in case this whole baseball thing didn't work out? Well, it was not, nah, I got, I, was. I got hurt playing baseball. So that ended real quick. That's, yeah, that's what well. did it. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to hear that, guys. I'm really sorry. I was going pro before all that happened. Well, I mean, you know what? Every, every everybody's got a story like that, and it's it's okay. <laughs> we, we 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 move on. But yeah. um, so let's take uh, a listen to a sample of their new summer hit called Television, out now on Spotify. Guys, is there anything you want to say before their ear ears are blessed by this banger? 
It's a uh, sun-soaked anthem. <laughs> yeah, just enjoy it. It's a great song. We're proud of it. All right, let's get into it. From what I gathered, this song is told from the perspective of someone who is looking back on an experience as being, quote unquote, hell of a ride. Is this referring to the nostalgia you guys associate with finding your passion for music to what I assume to be in late adolescence? Or is it told from the perspective of your future selves looking back on now as you embark on this crazy journey that is starting a band in New York City? Well, the song has... I think it's definitely rooted in a more romantic level, looking back on a relationship. But I think that the idea that memories can lie and that we tend to romanticize the past is pretty universal for all aspects of life. But the song, yeah, the song's about, you know, losing someone or losing something and realizing that maybe you're you're better off, but you still miss it. You know, if it's like a relationship, you know, you know you shouldn't be together, but sometimes you wish you still were. So it's just, it's uh, it's it's tackling those ideas. Perfect. That's a, yeah, it's a great answer. So, um, so what other projects did you work on during quarantine? And as artists, did all the extra time with nothing to do force you to dig into some feelings that musically you might not have explored in the past? And do you have any tips for aspiring artists to stick with their passion amidst feelings of isolation and uncertainty that we all felt over these past 18 months? Um, I would say the craziest thing that I noticed about like us evolving as music musicians over quarantine was the amount of new music that we wrote. Um, we had never written this many songs before in, in a year. And so it was kind of crazy. Um, knowing that we can pump that out of ourselves and, and still be at such a high quality that we like to write at. So know, Matt, you want to add to that? Yeah, no, Matt, totally. you. yeah, I think it just gave us a, gave us some time to really exercise our songwriting muscles and, and just get better as creatives. I think, I think the, some good advice that we could give to other people um, is just stick with it because the more you do it, the better you get at it. So just keep going. So in your opinion, and this goes for either of you, obviously, is it possible that we see like a kind of musical renaissance come out of COVID? Because as you were saying, a lot of people, like for you guys, you guys release, you guys were able to put out or at least create more stuff than you ever had before. And I was reading an article about how, you know, guitar center sales are going through the roof. All this music software is going through the roof. So do you think that we could see some type of like a, I don't know, just a ton of new artists come out of this? Is well, let's word? get, let's get uh, one thing straight. We do not like guitar center. Um, support your, <laughs> support your local music store. They need it more than ever. Um, Wow. And it's funny that you mentioned <laughs> a lot of beef. Lot of beef. No, I love it. I remember we had a we had a um a live stream show uh in February or March. I can't remember what it is. And Matt broke a string on his guitar the day of the show. And so we went to a local music store in the Bronx and they like took it in right away, did it right in front of us and just gave it back to us real quick. Guitar Center never does that. <laughs> no. Okay, no. anyways. Uh no, it's funny that you mentioned the whole Renaissance thing. Uh Matt and I we're working on some music last night and I kind of brought that up. I was like, we got to be at the forefront of this because, you know, I think the type of music that's going to be coming out from now on is, is going that's going to be popular is like really happy music. So I feel like that's one of the things that we're good at making. So that's our goal. Be at the forefront. Yeah. People are going to want happy music. They're going to want, live shows they're going to want to feel all those emotions again so i definitely think there's going to be like 
people are just going to be happy to be back. And I think it's going to be more prevalent than ever. Yeah, those are both fantastic answers. And I, I hope you're right. I hope you're totally right. So uh, before we go, two questions. One, where can people check out more of your stuff? And two, sell, sell, sell your other, sell your other objects. You guys got to, we have another minute or so. Just give us your best pitch of why people should listen to Wilma and why you guys are, as you describe yourselves, and I have to agree, the biggest and most important band in the world. Uh, okay, you can check us out on Spotify under Wilma, W-I-L-M-A-H. And you can follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Wilma the Band. And also follow us on TikToks because we are the self-proclaimed kings of TikTok. And uh, the reason that we're the best band in the world <laughs> is uh, we're sincere, we're genuine, we care. And we care about the Wilma community. We care about the music. And we just want everyone to understand where we're coming from emotionally and connect with it and just have a good time listening to our music and coming to our shows. Yeah. And when they also follow us on Spotify too. Yeah. Yes. Follow them on Spotify. And when they say biggest band in the world, by the way, they're talking about they're, they, what they really mean is thickest band in the world. They're, these guys, you, you can't see it right now, but they're thick. And they, they, hiding, put in, they put in the work in the gym, and it's fantastic. We love I'm it. hiding the wagon. He's hiding <laughs> the wagon. He, he's not showing it to us yet, but if you go to one of the live shows, you'll see it, I promise. Big in multiple ways, yes. Exactly. So that's our show for the day. You heard them. They're fantastic. Their name is Wilma, and they're taking New York City by storm. And if you get the same conceited high as I do from convincing your friends that you listen to bands before they're famous, you better hop in the Wilma wave now because they're coming up fast. I'm Elliot Adams, and thanks for joining us this week on Higher TV. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Welcome to Higher TV, and I am Mahalia Jackson. The pandemic resulted in many creatives finding themselves with little to no work. Some opted to go back to school, some sought alternative work, and others found themselves more inspired and creative than they've ever been. Joining to tell us more is singer, songwriter, actress, and now author, Tasha Michelle. Thank you for coming to the show. Thank you for having me. This is great. Tasha, prior to the pandemic, what types of projects were you involved with? Like, can you tell us where you toured and who you toured with? Sure. So um, prior to the pandemic, I was basically um, doing background vocals for different artists. I've sang for Layla Hathaway, Stevie Wonder, Elton John, uh, Patti LaBelle. So all of those experiences I was having um, and writing music for artists producing and writing my own songs, putting out soul music. I'm a soul singer, so I write for myself as well. Uh, gospel music, praise and worship, um, and also just doing um, a lot of stuff with the choir that I sing with, Broadway Inspirational Voices. Uh, we were recording videos and I was touring with Renee Elise Goldsberry from Hamilton. A lot of people know her from Hamilton. Um, and I was right in the middle of that tour right before the pandemic happened. When the lockdown first happened, what were your first thoughts regarding your career? Honestly, my first thought did not go to my career because I was just confused as to what was happening. Like everyone, I think, I don't even think that I thought it was going to be a long-term thing, maybe just for a moment, but it was kind of a, a moment of, okay, what's really happening here? It must be serious because New York never shuts down. Broadway never shuts down. Performances never, you know, shut down. And so I think that I was just kind of a little confused and a little worried about what's actually happened. But I, I, honestly, I don't think I thought long term at all. You know, a lot of us enjoy going to the theater. We enjoy going to the movies. So during the pandemic, what were some of the ways that you cope with not performing? Oh man, um, well, 
I did perform. I just didn't perform in front of an audience or live. All of my performances were happening inside of my house. And so a lot of artists um, were trying to find ways to still give hope, to still inspire the world, even though we were also going through our own things and losing people and trying to figure it out for ourselves. I think it's just in our nature to, to continue to be creative. So I was still doing a lot of home videos, home recordings. Um, I have a home studio recording, which I had done prior to the pandemic. So that really came in handy to really know how to do that. Um, and so performing, I don't think ever stopped, maybe within the first two weeks, because we were like, what's happening here? What's going on? But once we realized this was going to be a long term thing, um, performances started to happen within our own living rooms and our own apartments and bedrooms and things like that. And prayer was definitely something that was part of what helped to catapult us through that time. Many creatives such as yourself found alternative ways to express their creativity for you, it was publishing your first children's book. What inspired you to write a children's book? And can you tell us a little bit about what your book is about? Yes, so I've always wanted to create children's literature as well as create cartoons. Um, it's, it's been a passion of mine since I was little. And you know, with everything shut down, I had talked about it for years and I said, Finally, I have the space and time. I don't have the excuse of rehearsals. I don't have the excuse of meetings right now. Um, let me do something that I'm really compassionate about. And so I wrote Saturday, my favorite day, which is basically just about your childhood growing up on a Saturday. I took a lot of um, influence from my own Saturdays growing up and what it was like to finally not have school and to be able to um, spend time with your family. Who visits your house on Saturdays? What do you do with your family? What are some of the traditions that I still do now because that was part of my Saturday? And I think it's really important with the way that the world is. Our children have to grow up so fast. There's so many conversations that we have to have with them at a much younger age than when I was growing up. But I don't want us to forget that children need their childhood and that it's important to balance it with just the regular every everyday things that children go through and that we um, celebrate those moments as well. I love Saturdays. It's actually one of my favorite days of the week <laughs> also. Great title. Yes. Can you briefly describe the process it took to like from the conception to the actual execution of publishing your first book? Yes. Um, it was a little scary because I never, of course, wrote a children's book. I didn't know the first thing about the proper one, two, three steps, I believe. So I started to research. I started to um, go to the library and um, prior to the everything shutting down, like maybe a week ahead of time, I started to kind of pull some books from the library um, of what, what were, you know, what was the standard look of a children's book? How many pages was it? How colorful was it? Um, what was the language like for the age range that I was looking into? And then I started to pull like the illustrators. What are some of the illustrators that I like? Because that was my biggest fear. It was being able to pull an illustrator that I really liked. Um, of course, it's easy to say, oh, this person from Disney or this person from Pixar is wonderful, but can I truly afford, you know, someone that works for those companies? So I started to do my own research and find people on Instagram. And I found a wonderful illustrator named Avera Das. And once I told her about my project, we just started to work together through the entire pandemic of, you know, what it really looked like for Black children and Black families. What is the hair texture? What are the features on the face? So we spent a lot of time because I think it's really important um, for representation to happen in in the books that I'm creating, especially, and I want to make sure that we don't gloss over the things that are important to our culture. And so, of course, you know, working with the illustrator, working on the editing of the book, writing the story at least two or three times, um, finding an editor that once I was finished that could read over it and say, here's some of the things you need to fix. So it took time. It took a lot of patience, but um, it, in the end, I'm really happy with the results. Asha, where can people find more information about your work? 
Oh my goodness. They can go to beanbagstories.com. Um, that's my website where the book is actually sold out right now, but we're going to restock very soon. Um, you can find Saturday, my favorite day at just about any place that you can buy books. And my goal is to, you know, hopefully get this in libraries where you're able to check it out. Um, I'm also on Instagram. You can find me at miss.tashamichelle. And usually I have all of my information if I'm touring, if I'm doing music, anything about the books. Um, so you can find me in those two places for sure. Thank you, Tasha. There's never a right or wrong time to follow your passion. As we have seen, not even a pandemic can keep you from your destiny if you're willing to work hard enough toward it. For more information on Tasha's work, you can visit beanbagstories.com and follow her on Instagram at miss.tashamichelle. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for having me. This is wonderful. Thank you, Tasha Michelle, for coming to the show. That's it for this segment of Higher TV. I am your host, Nahelia Jackson. <laughs>